Set the word of there's two or three gathered in your name, Lord God. You're in our midst, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for the assurance, Lord God, that as we come before your presence, invite you in this place, Lord God, you will manifest your power and your presence, oh God. We confess to you our sin, Lord God, iniquities and transgression. May your blood wash us, cleanse us, and purify us, Lord God. For without holiness, no one can see you, Lord God. Give us a pure and clean heart, Lord God. Lord, right now, Lord God, we invite you, Holy Spirit, in this place. We are hungry for more of you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for the privilege, Lord God, to come before your presence, Lord God, to encounter you like never before. We want you. We invite you, Holy Spirit. Come and fill this place. Come, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord God. We worship you. We lift your name on high, Lord God. We exalt you, Lord God. We bless your name, Lord God. You are mighty. You are awesome, Lord God. You are good and you're loving us forever. Holy Spirit, we want you. Holy Spirit, we are hungry for more of you. We are thirsty, Lord God. Holy Spirit, come. Lord Jesus, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sherem brebe shinde de nebele basinde de nebele bakande. Lere bere besundo de nebele basande de nebele bakenda. This is the day that you have made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. You are so good to us. Lord, you have been good to us. And you will manifest your goodness today, Lord God. Lere bere shinde de nebele basinde de nebele bakande. Lere bere besinde de nebele basande de nebele bakande de nebele bakande. We am pray, Lord God, for importation. We declare signs and wonders, miracles, Lord God, in this place and to those who are watching in their homes, oh God. I pray, oh God, that you will meet them, Lord God. You will touch them, Lord God, and you will fill them, Lord God, with your power and your goodness, oh God. We rebuke every spirit of hindrance and heaviness in Jesus' name. And we allow your Holy Spirit to move mightily in this place. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. We declare freedom in this place and freedom to those who are watching, Lord God. Let the river flow from your presence to us, Lord God, and to those who are watching, oh God. Let them receive their miracles. We worship you in spirit and in truth. We adore you. We magnify your name. King of kings, Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Sere breve shite, lere breve masata na wala bakata la ya na matanda. Sore breve shinda na na wala bakande. Sere breve shinde, sere breve koto la ya na masando. Sere breve shite de bele bakata ya. Sere breve koto la ya na masando. We are expecting Lord that you will do great and mighty things, Lord God. Holy Spirit, come, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We worship you. We give you back all the glory, praises, and adoration and thanksgiving. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Lord, people, wherever you are right now, clap hands to the Lord. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we praise you, oh God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah to our Savior. Hallelujah to our King. Hallelujah to our Lord. Jesus, the most beautiful name, the most powerful name, by which everyone will be saved. Hallelujah. 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 
chose me when I was so unworthy and you cleansed me with your own love you told me in righteousness and mercy
God of all majesty, risen King, Lamb of God, holy and righteous, blessed we Let's declare.
let's respond to his love. Hallelujah. Oh, we welcome you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Indeed, Lord, indeed, you are awesome. You are awesome, Lord. You are awesome in this place. Lord. Hallelujah. We welcome you. You are awesome. I 
Because of you, we have become children of God, Lord Jesus. Because of your sacrifice on the cross, you died for all our sins. Amen. Because of your precious blood shed on Calvary. You have washed us white as snow. Hallelujah. Today, we are having communion. And communion is such a powerful thing. We are remembering what you have done for us on the cross of Calvary. Because of your sacrifice on the cross, because of your blood, now we have a testimony to share the world of your goodness and grace, and that we have overcome the evil one because of what you have done on the cross of Calvary. And Revelation, let us go to Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12. Verse 11, it says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives to the death. Lord, we have eternal life. Eternal life because of you. And we have a testimony of changed lives today because of your blood shed on the cross of Calvary. Hallelujah. Indeed, Lord, today, today, Lord, we remember your goodness and grace and mercy. Hallelujah. Let us go. To Psalm 77, verse 11, where it says, I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember your wonders of old. I will also meditate on your work and talk of your deeds. Today we remember... The greatest sacrifice of all time. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son. That whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So today, let us raise up the bread symbolic of the body of our Lord Jesus Christ broken beaten up for us killed for us paid for our sins that we may have eternal life come 
take and remember his grace, his mercy. The wine symbolic of the blood shed on the cross of Calvary 2,000 years ago. The blood that has washed us clean white as snow. Come, remember his sacrifice. There's no greater love than this Than a man would give his life For a friend There's no higher sacrifice Than a man would give his life You have been Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are not done worshiping yet. The tithe, the offering, is part of our worship. When we return our tithes and offerings, it is an acknowledgement. that everything we have really and truly belongs to Him. We are the stewards of everything that we have today. It really all belongs to the Lord. The wonderful thing about returning our tithes, He only requires us to return 10%. Amen. And when we, I want us to go to, uh, let us go to Malachi, Malachi chapter 10. Oh, sorry, Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3, verse. Malachi chapter 3, verses 10. Are you there in Malachi? Okay. In Malachi, chapter, verse 3, verse 10, it says, 
Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. That's a wonderful promise there. But the motivation, the motivation for us to return our tithes is really our love for God. Amen. Amen? It says in uh, Matthew 22, verse 37, To love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. This is the first and the greatest commandment. And lo love your neighbor as yourself. The second is like it. But the motivation of everything that we do is love. For in John 14, verse 15, it says, If you love me, if you love me, you will obey my commands. Hallelujah. So we don't give to bribe the Lord. He owns everything that we have. When we return what we have, we are just acknowledging it all belongs to Him. And we worship Him. We worship Him. That is the motivation of giving. Our love for God. Amen. But there is a wonderful, wonderful promise in the book of Proverbs chapter 8, verse 21 in the New King James. It says, Proverbs 8, verse 21, that I may cause those who love me to inherit wealth that I may fill their treasuries. The motivation of giving is love for God. Amen? Matthew 6.33 Seek ye first. Love the Lord your God with all your mind. This is the first the motivation of giving is love. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. If you love me, obey my commands. And all things, all things will be added unto you. The Lord knows what you need. Way beyond what you need. He wants you to overflow that you may be a blessing to those who are in lack. Amen? So today, let's worship the Lord with our giving. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 8 says, Here, mortal men receive the tithe, but there in heaven, he receives it as a testimony that he lives. Come on! Give our tithes and offerings to the Lord because this is worship. It is a testimony that he lives. Amen. receive our offering today our tithes amen return it to your people a hundredfold and may we advance the kingdom of God for your glory and honor in Jesus name we pray amen and amen hallelujah uh, usually at the end of the service we do a, a second offering our second offerings go to people that are in need. During this uh, quarantine, we have been going out in the streets uh, to pray for the sick, 
the poor, feed them, because uh, it says the, sec the second greatest commandment, the Lord says, the second is love your neighbor. Amen. We love our neighbor by sharing to them the love of Jesus Christ, sharing to them our, what we have, praying for them. Hallelujah. I have a wonderful testimony. Last uh, Friday, we went back to this big lot where we have uh, about maybe 20 families there. And there was this man there that got healed the week before. Uh, he, could not, he could not walk. I had to call him, so he had to really limp. He says, I don't need food. I need money. I need money to buy medicine for my feet. I said, we don't give out medicine, but I'll pray for you. We'll just give you food. So I, lay hand, I laid hands on him, and uh, he had a bandage on his feet. He could hardly walk. But uh, the good thing, uh, last Friday, he was, he was running to me and said, Pastor, I got healed. <laughs> now he, Tagalog po, no? Kakalakad na ako. Salamat po. Sabi ko, Panginoon yan, it's the Lord who's healed you. Amen? So there are many other testimonies of healings and the grace of God. Yesterday, our youth went out to Manila to, to give out food, share the gospel, pray for the sick. Amen? God is doing a mighty thing in the midst of of his people in this time of quarantine. Amen. Let's manifest the love of God. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. Pastor Mark. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. We had a wonderful worship this afternoon. Amen. Tagos ang banal na espiritu kahit hanggang TV ninyo. Praise the Lord. Amen. So uh, let us have our announcements first before we um, go with the word. So um, we are uh, live in our worship service today, being broadcasted in our Facebook and our YouTube channels. So we encourage everyone to please tag your friends along, share the video so that a lot of people will be able to be blessed with our message this afternoon. Amen. And so uh, for our first announcements, for uh, our online giving, it's still up, of course. If you want to return your tithes and give your offerings, our bank account is uh, very much open to welcome those uh, uh, offerings and tithes. The account number is uh, 12219 3 the River of God, Inc., China Banking Corporation. Amen. You can uh, do a fund transfer from your own uh, bank portal or you can also do a fund transfer from Paymaya or Gcash. Just go to the bank transfer tab or button. Amen? If you are located abroad and you would like to uh, give your offerings or um, return your tithes, our dollar account is also open. It's uh, 12270935124. Just don't forget to include our SWIFT code. It's C-H-B-K-P-H-M-M. -M. Amen. All right. So um, for blessed to be a blessing, River of God has already expanded. It's um, blessed to be a blessing activities. We have uh, blessed people from our uh, membership, from our church, those who were affected by the quarantine, our pastors, and now we are also doing street feeding. And later, we will have our uh, second offering dedicated for that. So if you would like to give and the Lord is touching your heart to be a blessing, the account number is posted in your screens. Amen? So to further give you um, an easy task to uh, do your online giving, we will be showing you a short video. Steps on how you can do online banking for your tithes, offering, and donations for our COVID-19 relief efforts. Step 1. Go to the online banking portal, our website, or mobile banking app of your bank. 
Step 2. Look for the online banking, fund transfer, or send money button, then click. Step 3. A send to other bank option will appear. Click the button to enable you to send money to other banks. Step 4. Scroll down and choose the option, China Bank 10 digits via Instapay. Step 5. Key in the account number of River of God, the amount you desire to send in the designated slots, then press the Confirm button. Step 6. If your bank portal is asking for an account name, just key in River as the first name, Off as the middle name, and God as the last name. Other options will be River of God as the first, middle, and last names. Thank you for your kindness. Amen. Praise the Lord. So those six easy steps will make your giving even more easier. Amen? Six nga ba? All right. So uh, while we are still in quarantine, we uh, should not forsake meeting with each other as the Bible is always reminding us. So we would like to remind everyone to participate in our online discipleships. You can make use of our online platforms. We encourage our leaders as well to uh, be even more consistent and intensify your discipleship and evangelism. And if you are listening to this message today and you are not part of any life group yet, please leave a message in our Facebook account and we will be glad to connect you with our life groups. Amen? And if you are posting your photos online, please don't forget to use the hashtags. ROG Online Discipleship and ROG Online Outreach. Praise the Lord. If you would like to uh, use the materials, we are, uh, they are available and you can download them for free in your life groups. Just visit our uh, website. It's www.riverofgod.ph slash dship dash materials. Amen. Okay, this coming July 1, we are all praying that the government will be lifting or relaxing the quarantine measures. And if we will be uh, in MGCQ by next week, then we will have our first on-site prayer meeting at the River of God Center. Amen? We are all praying for this. If, um, if not, then we will have our online prayer meetings. Just wait for our announcements. Amen. And by the way, praise report lang po in last week's uh, in this week's prayer online prayer meeting, we would like to give praises to the Lord and glorify his name. The Holy Spirit was in the move during that time. A lot of people were actually healed. A lot of people received breakthroughs. <laughs> praise the Lord. As we speak in tongues, there is an outpouring of the Holy Spirit and word of knowledge, not only from our speaker, but even from our viewers. Amen? So, makikita po natin doon, the Holy Spirit is not bound. He can do great things even we are online. Amen? Praise the Lord. So, let us continue to pray. Every night, we would like to invite you to be part of our corporate prayer session. That's at 8 p.m. The prayer points are posted in our Facebook page. Amen? If you would like to have some prayer and counseling, you can also uh, uh, leave a message in our Facebook account and we will connect you to our pastors for prayer and counseling. Praise the Lord. So uh, I also would like to invite you on July 2 to 4, we will have our online prophetic and supernatural workshop that will be from Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. The topics are posted in your screen. The schedules will be from 7 to 9 p.m. on Thursday and Friday and uh, 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. on Saturdays. Amen. Praise the Lord. So uh, on June 30, we will have our second edition of our River Talks. Praise the Lord. It will be a beam live in our Facebook and YouTube channels. June 30, Tuesday, 7 p.m. Um, our host will be Pastor Grico. And uh, he will be joined by our pastors, EJ, um, Eric, and um, Pastor George from um, River of God, Batak. Praise the Lord. So please watch. Again, that will be on June 30, 
Tuesday at 7 p.m. Again, also praise report for our first ever River Talks last Tuesday. We have received a lot of, um, of um, testimonies on how the testimony of Angelou were able to bless them. So tune in. We will have more segments for you in our River Talks. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, so are you excited to hear the Word of God today? Yeah. Amen. All right, so we'll call on Pastor Rachel Sanchez for our word today. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, wow, oh, hallelujah. Wow. All right, um, what a beautiful worship we have. And I'm sure, you know, the Lord is here. Amen. Naramdaman niyo ba yung presensya niya? Uh, we are all, all sabog kanina because of the presence of the Lord. And He is still here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I just want you to open your hearts, Lord. Continually open our hearts to receive you. I know, O oh Lord, that you are here in our midst. And we will talk more about you through this story, O oh Lord, of this woman and the Pharisee. Luke 7, 36 to 50. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Luke 7, 36 to 50. This is a story about Jesus being anointed by a sinful woman. And so my version is NIV. And I just want you all to open your heart so we could receive the fullness of the message in here. Now, one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him. This is Simon. So he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. When a woman who had lived a sinful life in that town learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house, she brought an alabaster jar of perfume. In some version, it's an alabaster flask of fragrant oil. And as she stood behind Jesus at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her, with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and poured perfume on them. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man, referring to Jesus, were a prophet, he would know who is touching him and what kind of a woman she is, that she is a sinner. Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to tell you. Simon said, tell me, teacher, two men owed money to a certain money lender. One owed him 500 denarii and the other 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back. So he canceled the debts of both. Now, which of them will love him more? Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt canceled. You have judged correctly, Jesus said. Verse 44. Then he turned toward the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet. But she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman from the time I entered has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she had poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, for she loved much. But he who has been forgiven little, loves little. Then Jesus said to her, to her your sins are forgiven. The other guests began to say among themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. This morning, I texted Pastor Rodell that I will be dwelling on forgiveness and love. And that's why we sang all those beautiful songs. And I really believe in my heart that we will have a good encounter today of the Lord. Amen. We already did, and I know you will. And you probably did this morning when you worship the Lord. And I know when you talk about Jesus and we felt the presence of his love, you know, and I know it says in Matthew 18, 20, when you talk about him, when two or three are gathered in his name, there he is in the midst of them. So I want you to tell your neighbor, prepare yourself. Prepare yourself. Are you expectant? 
Hallelujah. So am I. And he, he continually makes me drunk in the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, oh, I really pray that we are all together so you could feel the manifest presence of the Lord. See, the story is about Simon inviting Jesus at his house. Simon is a Pharisee. And I do not know why Simon in, invited Jesus. All I could just say, Jesus loves to party. Because in all of, you know, every time you read stories in the book, he's in, an, in a place eating somewhere. He even one day, he was walking Jericho and saw Zacchaeus and said, Zacchaeus, I'm going to your house. See, gusto niyang kumain. So Jesus loves. Jesus' first miracle is on a wedding feast. Right? So he, he loves to party because Jesus came for the lost. Jesus wants to, you know, to talk to Jesus wants fellowship. And in fact, in the book of Revelation, when we meet our master, the bridegroom, it will be a wedding feast. Huh? Super damning party in, you know, in the Bible. And I know Jesus loves to see and fellowship with people. So I believe Simon heard about Jesus because we know that Jesus goes town to town talking about the gospel and you know, talking about the kingdom of God. And so Simon heard of Jesus and invited Jesus to his house. And of course, everyone hears when someone known, I believe Jesus is known, he's a teacher and he's full of wisdom. And this woman heard about Jesus as well. And so this woman came to Simon's house uninvited. We do not know anything about this woman. The Bible says he is, she is a sinner. She could probably be a prostitute. One thing I know, during this time, he crashed into the party. So therefore, she's a great gate crasher, we call it, right? Party crasher. So she crashed in. And she approached Jesus. You know, during those times, culturally, they have little, you know, low, low tables. And so we read earlier that Jesus was reclining. And so the woman came there. And no one was expressing any shock because when there is a guest in the town, especially there's a preacher, normally they open doors, okay? It's most of the time, they spend their time eating and feasting at the patio or like an open court. And that's where they were. And so this woman just entered. And no one expressed shock. They know her. She's a sinner. And no one was really paying attention to her. And the scandal started when she approached the Lord, okay? She drew closer to the Lord. When she was at the corner, maybe no one was looking at her. But her attention, when Jesus, the scandal started, when Jesus allowed the woman, the sinful woman, to get closer to him. And they probably, you know, were whispering. So she stepped onto the corner and to the center where Jesus was reclining. And I believe people became upset. You know, culturally, the pure and the impure, they do not mix. You cannot. You cannot touch a, a person. They even, in the Jewish culture, when a sinner or someone who's filthy or dirty touch them, they go and take a bath. They have to wash themselves. And so you cannot touch someone who's pure and then you're filthy or you're a sinner. So... Everyone were just looking. And the question is, why did Jesus allow this woman to touch him, right? So no one likes gate crushers. I believe you have parties before and you don't like anyone who's uninvited to come into the party. You get shocked. Sino nag-invita dyan, right? Okay. Gate crushers, you know who they are? They are desperate people. Desperado sila. They're desperate. Either they want to eat or they're so nosy that they want to know who are the guests in the party. So they invite themselves, just like this woman. This woman was desperate. She heard that Jesus was coming to eat or dine at the Pharisee's house. So she invited herself. She invited herself, but she had a purpose. People who crush in, uninvited, have a purpose. And she did. She entered the room and she was prepared. Handasha. Why? We read that she was, she brought an alabaster jar, an alabaster jar full of a costly fragrant oil. Very fragrant, very expensive. 
And if it's very expensive, I would suppose it's a spikenard. We have been in Israel five times already, and I know the smell of spikenard. Nard is so expensive up to this point. And this woman, you know, culturally, women in those days, they have a necklace and they put like a little flask or a jar, you know, hanging on their neck, and that is the oil. Because when you, you know, it's good, it has this aroma. And so this woman, woman was carrying this costly perfume in a flask. And so she heard that Jesus is in the party, it's in the, Simon's house. So she came prepared. She came prepared. She brought this present. And I know she was planning something. And that was it. You know, you know she, we read in what she did, the action she did. It's very costly. She brought a flask of fragrant oil. Very costly. In some version, it says that it can cost like a whole year's wage. And it, that is, and so she was there. And Jesus was reclining. And that's the reason his feet probably was extending outside and parang ganyan siya, nakaganyan siya, so that he could reach, you know, food on the table because it's a very low table. And so the woman was there standing at his feet, looking at Jesus. And she was crying. She was crying. And I believe this woman knew Jesus because she probably have heard about Jesus in one of the synagogues. And she came in prepared and maybe she has heard of Jesus teaching about the kingdom of God. So when she knew about it, she knew and probably in those teachings of Jesus, she has received forgiveness. Because Jesus came for the lost. And she knew in her heart, I heard you, Jesus. I heard you talking about forgiveness. And here I am. I want to just shower you with love. I just want to break this flask of oil and just shower you with this oil. And so she came in. And she was weeping. And she was listening to Jesus. And she began to weep. And tears and tears and tears anointed the feet of Jesus. These are tears of joy. Tears of joy because sometimes, somewhere, I heard you talking, Jesus. So I humbled myself and I am now forgiven and I am now accepted. So there, this tears of joy, a broken spirit. And you know, and you know the word of God says, a broken spirit you will not despise. Hallelujah. So she came and she knew that she is welcome in her heart of hearts. These are tears of joy and appreciation. And Jesus allowed her to touch her, you know, his feet. So wow, so not only tears of joy because she is forgiven, but tears of appreciation saying, you Lord, thank you for allowing me to touch you. I can come near you. I'm desperate and thank you for forgiving my sins. You are welcoming me home. <laughs> oh, thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, the presence of God is here. Oh. And, and as she was crying, her tears, you know, washing the feet of Jesus. Imagine that. Bumabaha ng luha. Washing the feet of our master. And she did something that is unacceptable in their culture. You know what she did? She undid her hair. Inalis niya. And you know, she let it flow. And that is so immodest. You cannot welcome that publicly. You will, you know, just let it down. Binagsak niya yung hair niya. Oh my gosh. This shocked everyone. It shocked everyone. Especially the host. Sino ba nagpapasok sa babaeng ito? Who? Suddenly, she wiped the feet of Jesus, all the tears, with her hair. Grabe. Imagine that. And she's kissing the feet of Jesus. She was kissing the feet of Jesus, expressing an intimacy, could not explain. And she was doing this publicly. Come on, this is very offensive. This is very offensive to the people around, except for Jesus. Wow, Jesus is the receiver of so much love and appreciation, so much adoration. So Jesus was happy, he was welcoming this. But the people around were talking. Doesn't he know? And even Simon. 
Imagine this. It just, you know, I'm just trying to make you feel and, and perceive what is happening at that moment, at the scene. Her hair flowing publicly, and this is so immodest. And she was kissing Jesus' feet, feet fervently, again, kissing it again and again and again. Tumata sa gulo, siguro yung mga kilay ng mga tao, right? But not for Jesus. Jesus is so happy. This scene is so awkward. Simon was feeling that way. This scene is so awkward. I have to stop this woman. Probably, he, you know, but in his mind, he was doubting. Is, is this man a prophet? Doesn't he know who this woman is? Remember, he invited Jesus into his house. Probably to, to know if he's really true. To know if he's really the Messiah. To know if he's really a prophet. And he was doubting. And I could just imagine how awkward it was. You know, having that, that everyone was looking at this woman and, and everyone watching him. And there was silence in the room. Silence in the room. And no one was talking until Jesus broke the silence. And Jesus spoke. Meantime, Let's talk about this woman. Yeah, she was a great gate crasher. She was a desperate one. She's also a worshiper. She is a worshiper. Imagine the nerve of this woman to go inside the party uninvited. She invited herself. And she didn't care. She has the courage. She has the boldness. I will come. I want to worship this man. A true worshiper will worship in spirit and in truth. Come on. A true worshiper is someone who will not care and mindful of the people as long as I get near to the master. Amen. And a true worshiper doesn't think what people will say. Come on. A true worshiper is desperate. And he will not or she will not allow Jesus to pass by. Instead, she will make she, Jesus stay. 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 That's a true worshiper. A true worshiper is someone who will not allow her tears to run dry. Hallelujah. A true worshiper will do anything unimaginable, unthinkable. And that's what we just experienced right now in our worship. We were shouting. We were crying. We were laughing. And I don't care what people say. You know what? You can dance. You can praise. You can be silent. I understand. As long as your focus is on the one you love, Jesus. The courage and the strength of this woman is so intense. Grabe. She was so bold in expressing her love despite there were so many people watching her. This is outrageous, sabi nila. Unbelievable. And I don't care. She's a believer. She's a worshiper. She didn't care. The Pharisees, they're conservative. I don't care. Jesus was happy. That's all what it is. You know what? Earlier, Jesus came in our worship. If you want to change the atmosphere, one word is the word desperate. You got to be desperate. You got to be expectant. Uhaw na uhaw ka sa kanya. You're thirsty for him. You want to change everything right now as you are listening to me. Be expectant. Be desperate for Jesus. And when he sees desperate hearts, you know what happened? His love manifests. He appears. And that's so easy to do. Just you say, Jesus, here I am. I'm hungry and thirsty for you. I just want you, Jesus. I humble myself before you. And this is what is the heart of King David. That's why we, you know, David is a worshiper. He's, he loves the Lord because he's like a deer panting for the water. We should be like that. And you know what? This woman is a worshiper because she's not easily offended. That's a real worshiper. You don't get offended even if people criticize you. A real worshiper 
is determined to get into the presence. You will not settle for the shallow things. You want to dive in. You want to go swim. And you want to find the treasure in the deep. And that's Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. You know why I'm saying this? Because we are all in the comforts of our home. And I believe this is our freedom to express our love. You know, I, I, I really, I love worshiping face to face with you all and corporately worshiping the Lord. But there are times we need to be alone with Him. And now you are in your house and if you're a new believer, it's time to swim in the river. Enjoy the presence, dive in and look for Jesus. He's hiding. Nagpapakipot lang siya, but pursue Him. Hallelujah. Yeah, and chase Him. You know, the woman is a worshiper. This woman is a worshiper. Kaya nga, brothers and sisters, you know, this word, it's for you. But worship is for the Lord. So always come in time of worship. Worship Him day and night. Never stop. The woman has a flask. In some versions, like in Mark 14, verse 3, I think, it says that the woman has a flask. And in our version, there is a box or a jar. But inside is very costly perfume or a fragrant oil. And I believe there are two kinds of worshiper. One who worships, I, I would say open and close, and another one who's a broken one. If you're open, you can control your aroma. You know what I'm saying? Because people are watching you. You, want to give, you don't want to give everything. You're so concerned about people around you. So you can control yourself. And there's another worshiper who is the broken one. So broken na you cannot control yourself anymore. Broken into pieces that even if you're put together, you're still broken. <laughs> you're so broken that you do not care if people are looking at you. You're so broken that you are unashamed of anything. You're too broken to worry about your makeup. And that's what happens every time I worship. I don't care what I'm wearing. I don't care about my position. And I do believe it's you. You're like that too. You don't care how you look at it. You don't care. You're too broken to look around and see if people are worried, you know, are looking at you. It's right? You don't care kung mo and everything. All you have to do is just worship Him. Because for you, there's only one audience and His name is Jesus. There's only one audience. You came to worship the King. And that's the reason why we are always worshiping. You know, we are made to worship Him. Wala na tayong ibang sasambahin, kundi siya lang. And so, it's really sad. I really miss our actual worship service. But, kaya nga yung iba, some people will even criticize, why do they raise their hands? I don't care what you say. Do not wonder why we raise our hands. Do not wonder if we shout or we say hallelujah or praise the Lord. Do not wonder why we cry and laugh sabay pa yan. It's, it's really, you know, because of all this love and appreciation. You know, and when the glory comes, okay, when the glory comes, you have to understand the glory is something so, oh my God, I don't know how to explain it. For some people, it's abnormal, but that's what it is. What is abnormal becomes normal in the presence of God. What is supernatural becomes natural to the worshiper. And this is what it is. There's so much joy in the, liver, in the river because we celebrate Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. You know what? If you're a worshiper, you will always say, I'm here to love him. I'm here to celebrate him. I'm here to thank him. And that's this woman came because she wants to appreciate what Jesus did for her. She used her hair. She used her hair. Would you imagine that? According to them, and for women, our hair is our crowning glory, right? And if that is so, that's why they always put it up. And what she did, she let, she let it down. And she started to use it to wipe the tears. 
cleanse the feet of Jesus. Imagining that, the glory wiping the feet. And the part of the body that is most dirty is the feet. Because during those days, they walk on dusty grounds. The roads were soil, dirt and poo, camel's poo probably. And that's what she did. That was so shocking to everyone. That was unheard for. It is uncalled. But what an exchange. You will exchange the glory for the lowest part of the body, the feet. All we know, this woman is a sinner and she needs forgiveness and she probably have received that already. And so she came humbly with a broken spirit. You know, sometimes when you know what Jesus had done for you, you will do the unthinkable, right? <laughs> and that's why, you know, we, we continually go out feeding people, praying for people, loving people, because we all came from there. You know, it's not so hard to get to an attitude of praise and worship, to be honest. I think Pastor Rodell and the worship team, you know, they're gifted. Their worship is beautiful. So I always want to tell you guys, continue to be spirit-led all the time and be filled by the spirit. For me, in my case, I would just tell you, I know where I came from and all of us. I know where Jesus took me. And... For this woman, she was lavishing, you know, she was pouring all her love. And some, I think the people were talking about her, her because she could probably be a prostitute. Definitely a notorious sinner. And if I really want to get in to worship, all I need to do is just go back to history and my heart starts to swell. I go back to history, and my heart swells with thanksgiving for what Jesus did. Thank you, Jesus, for taking us out of the pit. This reminds me of, you know, Joseph. Remember Joseph? He was put into the pit by his brothers, and he was left there to die. I thought that was me too. I will be in the pit forever to die until one day Jesus took me out. I even saw myself in a man's hole. Nasa and then Jesus took the cover of that hole and he pulled me out. I was full of grease and tar. Hallelujah. Ano ko ba naman hindi magpapasalamat sa kanya? Where he took us all. He pulled me out. Well, anyway, the action of that woman was not performance. It was love. Amen? Because there is a story behind it. And so are you. Alam ko may story din kayong lahat. I have my story, you have a story, but that's behind us because we are now a new creation. But just like this woman, we have to start worshiping him. And I always think about this woman and I always think about myself. With Jesus, your story is now history. It is about him, it's about his story and your new life in Christ. Well, you can say, Pastora, you do not know what I've gone through. I do not need to know. All of us were sinners. So, it doesn't matter if it's how big your sin is or how small. We all were sinners. And so, this woman was worshiping out from her heart. Some people might say, well, River of God, you're crazy people. You worship with shouting and laughing and dancing. I don't care. We're not worshiping to impress anyone. 
We're worshiping because we love the King. Hallelujah! Because of what He did for us. Amen? And the same way for you. You know, try it. Try it. Don't stop yourself. Open your heart and let it flow. Let it flow. So Jesus was showing Simon an example of what a true worshiper is. And because this woman adored with no hesitation. And she's a worshiper. Now let's go to Simon. Simon is the Pharisee. Okay, there are only three people I see here. The sinful woman, Simon the Pharisee, and Jesus. So, Simon the Pharisee reacted. We saw it. The woman's contact with Jesus is so outrageous that he was looking and doubting and he was... He could not take it, and all he knew was that this woman was a sinner. And Simon is the host of the party, and he started to question. He doubted that Jesus was a prophet because Jesus was unable to discern and to see the personality of this woman. Jesus was, was unable to see the woman's heart. So Simon was saying, I invited to check out this man he looks like he's not a prophet. He's not a prophet because he allowed the woman, a sinful woman, to touch his feet. But Jesus, as we read earlier, Jesus is, he could discern things. That's why he asked Simon. He asked Simon. And, and he says, he, he asked Simon in, when Jesus was looking at the woman, and Jesus did two things. What did Jesus do? Jesus can read the mind. Jesus' story is simple. There are two debtors. Dalawang may utang. One has a debt ten times, more than ten times of the other one. You know, the word debt is like sin. In Greek, I can't remember the exact word. Just like in our father, the prayer, Lord, forgive us of our sins. In some version, forgive us of our trespasses and forgive us of our debts. So Jesus used the story of two debtors or two sinners. The creditor forgives the debt of both. Rather, you know, and, and, it, and it, parang if you have a loan, two people loan the, loan the house, you know, they purchase a house. And all, both of them have an amortization. And the man who has a very expensive house, a bigger debt, was forgiven. So Jesus was saying, what would you do? And he asked, which of this, Jesus asked, who do you think will love him more? Kung pinatawad ka, mas malaki kasalanan mo. Who do you think will love him more? And Simon, he was so hesitant. Uh, I suppose. That's what he said. I suppose. I suppose the one whom he forgave the most, the one who has the worst sin, the one who has more debts. It's correct. Simon knew. But he also is feeling that, huh, Jesus is putting a trap. True. So Jesus commands his, his, you know, his reply, and Jesus says, you answered right. But his point is forgiveness. Jesus was trying to show Simon forgiveness. And Simon, all the while, looking at this woman, he was thinking of how dirty this woman is. So Jesus asked, which of them will love him more? And he was hesitant, but he understood. So Jesus said, do you see this woman? Sabi ni Lord. Do you see this woman? Simon thought Jesus was unable to see the kind of woman. So Jesus, napakatalino ng Panginoon. Simon, do you see this woman who is filthy, shameful, and she never stopped kissing my feet. Simon was thinking, hindi nakita ni Lord. Simon thought, Jesus never understood. 
But Jesus says, do you know this woman? Do you see this woman? Do you see her love? Do you see her repentance? Do you see her appreciation of me? That's what I see, Simon. But what do you see? You see the past. You see her mistakes. You see all her sins. That's why she's like that. Yes, indeed, she is filthy. She has more sins than you. But look what she did. She did the unimaginable. She did the unthinkable. You know what? What Jesus was trying to show here is there's bountiful forgiveness. And a bountiful forgiveness means potential, great love, appreciation. I remember, I would say that love produces extraordinary action. Love sometimes produces unbelievable, unimaginable action or response. And this is what it is. I remember when Bishop Chito was courting me. Wow, I'll tell you the story. I was living in America and my and my and he was courting me. He was calling me every day. I can't believe it. At the time, oh my goodness, every patak ng minute, it's extraordinary, super expensive. So he calls me every day, not only once, twice, and three times, whoa, more, more than that. So after a long I don't know how many months, but he started calling me every day and calling me and calling me. And it was an extraordinary action. Until one day, I got to go back to the Philippines. And we were talking about that. And I said, why did you call me every day? It was so expensive. It was so bad. He used all of his money. He, his bank account closed. Every saving gone, nothing, no savings. You know, yes, he really used up all his money. Why? Because love produces extraordinary response. But the problem with that, he didn't have any wisdom. Sana bumili na lang siya ng ticket papuntang America. Nakita pa niya ako, right? Hindi sa telepono lang. But I could see the love, right? The same thing. This woman's action was unimaginable. Oh my God, unexpected. Because it was full of gratitude. It was full of humility. She loves the Lord so much that she appreciates everything. And I remember I used the word prepared. She prepared herself. Because she probably was thinking that Simon will not do anything. And that is true. She came in, and Jesus says in verse 44, toward the woman and sees, and Jesus said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet. But she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss. But this woman, from the time I entered, has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, for she loved much. But he who has been forgiven little, loves little. Imagine that. I, it probably felt like a sword piercing the heart of Simon. Right? Because he thinks it's okay. He's, he probably doesn't think that he's a sinner. But Jesus was saying, you know, all the courtesies, all these things you did not do to me. But this woman knew from the moment she came, she poured, she did all that what she didn't do. And so, Simon criticized the woman for supplying all the courtesies that Jesus was looking from him as the host of the party. But you know what? This is so beautiful. A picture of forgiveness and love. This woman loved much. I want to tell you that the action of the woman did not save her. 
all the work she did did not save her. But love and forgiveness made her feel accepted by God. That's the point of this, you know, story. It has produced so much love in her that she need to see Jesus. That's why Jesus says, your faith, go in peace. Your faith has healed you. Your faith has forgiven you. You are safe. You know what? I remember, I, you know, this sermon, let me tell you, is a very old sermon that the Lord told me to give to you today. I did this 10 years ago, 2010. And I remember when I gave this sermon in 2010, the whole atmosphere, Pastor Rodel was there. He was still, a, you know, he was our, one of the earliest members of River of God. And he was, of course, he, and up to now, our worship pastor. It was in 2010 when I gave this, and the presence of God was so intense. And we were all on the floor. We were just all loving God. We were all crying and worshiping. And I remember clearly, and I'm going to tell you this. The Lord said in this one sentence, because we were loving him just like this woman. You know what the Lord said? He said, it's good to be loved. It's good to be loved. And I'm sharing this to you because kung nauuhaw ka kay Lord, mas uhaw siya sa atin. He really is hungry and thirsty for our love. And I'm closing this right now because I feel His presence. And this is my message. You have to seek Him with all your heart. Believe that you have been forgiven. Believe there's no greater love. Hallelujah. The love that Jesus gave. It was faith. It was love. So right now, with all of us not looking at our neighbors, I invite you to worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. I want you to come into His presence. And if you're very new in the river, do not just dip your toes in the water. Go swim in the river. Swim in the river. Enjoy His presence. Enjoy His presence. Let's kiss His feet. Let's anoint His feet with, his, with our tears. This is your opportunity. As Pastor Rodell will lead us, I want your embrace, Lord. Kalimutan mo muna lahat ng iniisip mo. There's only one audience in this room, and his name is Jesus. You are in the comforts of your home. And believe me, we have an unlimited God. He can meet you anywhere and everywhere and at this moment. Lord, we humble ourselves before. We're desperate. The pastor jar is all I have of worth. <laughs> we I break the flask. We're broken. It's less than you deserve. You're far more beautiful, <laughs> more precious <laughs> than your son. Focus your eyes on him. your hands and say, here I am, take me as a
I saw a belt, a belt that we put on our waist in a vision. It's the belt of truth, the Word of God. Jesus is the truth, the way in life. What you're hearing is the truth. Jesus loves you, and that's the truth. Kratos, he gave you a perfect love. No other love can be greater than what he did for you. You press in. He's here. The Lord is here. Yeah, speak to him. Speak to him. <laughs> He's here. He's here. You blow my mind. He's here. The wind of his spirit is here. The Holy Spirit is here. It's the spirit of love. You feel the spirit of love right now. <laughs> My cry. Yes, Lord, the spirit of love is moving. <laughs> Holy Spirit, thank you. The spirit of love. Isn't he amazing? You blow my mind. Oh, he's pouring, he's pouring, he's pouring it now. I see bottles and bottles and glasses, and he's pouring his love. He's pouring his love. You are that container. You are that vessel. You are that bottle. And Jesus is just pouring his love right now. Fill us up, God. Fill us up with the love, God. Fill us up right now. Overflow, overflow, overflow. It's you and Jesus now.
this present the presence is here right now I want you to touch that body part kung saan man yang masakit sa iyo ngayon and claim your healing right now in the name of Jesus I decree and declare you are healed Jesus has forgiven you has broken all the curses over you and in your bloodline and I decree and declare you are healed Thank you, Lord. I see a heart. If you have a heart condition right now, <laughs> I see this heart beating just right. Perfect, normal. And all I see in that heart is a healthy heart and a supernatural heart and a good physical heart. And more importantly, it's spiritually beating for Jesus. You are healed. Claim that heart right now. You are healed, whatever heart conditions you may have. And right now, in this presence, I see witchcraft and I break that witchcraft right now. I cast that witchcraft in you. Right now, every curse is broken in the name of Jesus. Oh, enjoy the presence of God is here. Holy Spirit, the spirit of love. The spirit of love is here. Just believe it's this love. This love is the one that heals. This is the love of Jesus healing you. Restoration. I heard a word restoration. Every person who needs restoration in their relationship right now. Here you go. Receive it. Receive it. Children to their parents who will be restored in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Right now, I even pray for our nation. I know that this coronavirus, for those who believe, you are healed. This virus will not touch you in the name of Jesus. I pray for the Philippines, my Lord. We love this nation. 
We ask forgiveness for our nation. We ask forgiveness for all our iniquities, our trespasses, all our transgressions, and all the sins of this nation. There are too many to say, God. There are too many to, to list down, but you know them all. But your mercy always triumphs over judgment. You're a merciful God. On behalf of this nation, Lord, we humble ourselves before you and ask that you take your heavy hand away from it. Forgive this nation, Lord. Forgive this nation, Lord. Forgive every Filipino, wherever they are. We ask forgiveness. Restore our economy, Lord. Since you gave me the word restoration, restore the economy of this nation. And I speak life to that word right now. Restoration for the economy of our nation. Restoration for all Filipinos, families right now, oh Lord God. Restoration back to work for all those who lost the work. They will be restored back to their employment in the name of Jesus. Everything that the enemy has stolen from us will be restored back to our treasuries. Thank you, Lord. There will be a mighty restoration. Most of all, we will be restored back to you, Abba, Father. We thank you. Lord, save this nation. Save the Philippines. Save the Filipinos. Save our president. Save everyone who are seated in authority, oh Lord God. Thank you, Lord. I see a whirlwind. And let this whirlwind of your presence Go to every sector of society of our nation in the seven mountains, oh God. Oh Lord, yes. Let it be so. Let it be so. In the name of Jesus, do not stop, Lord, until this nation bows down to you. Thank you, Lord. We will all bow down. Thank you, Lord, for your revelations. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your love and we pray for Israel we know all of you this is your chosen one and we pray for the peace of Jerusalem peace in Israel save them Lord save your nation that is written in the book you said this in Isaiah 55 11 you release your words and it will never return to you void it will accomplish everything that you have sent it for it. and we receive it and we know oh Lord you are here watching us you're watching Israel you're watching the Philippines we thank you Lord Thank you for your beautiful presence. We will never stop. We will never stop worshiping you and loving you, Jesus. Amen. We will be doing a second offering. I was asked to do the second offering. Thank you, Lord, for accepting us as our offering, our bodies to you, God. We will do a second offering, and we will be using this money for feeding the poor, helping those who are affected by the virus, and just love your neighbor. <coughs> Jesus loves us so much, and he always has compassion for the poor. You know how good God is very good and amidst all this chaos amidst all this um, thing happening around us globally and around the world being affected economically thank you Lord you remain to be faithful to your children thank you Lord so come and give give the best that you can to help your the people out of your abundance Offering is always out from your heart. Offering is always from the heart. So be a cheerful giver. Be a 
your forgiver. day. It's beautiful the whole day. Amen. I know you will celebrate still with your families and you will be continually worshiping the Lord. Brothers and sisters, before we part, um, I just want you to just, just like our vision, love God with all your heart, with all your soul, and make disciples. And that means loving your neighbor. Continue to love your neighbor because the Lord God is love. Amen. So I bless you. Let's all stand up as I will release and pray for you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, you allowed us to feel your presence. You allowed us to feel your love. Truly, Lord, you will never allow us to go home or we are now on the phone to end the service empty-handed you poured your presence oh lord it's so beautiful and we thank you we thank you for the river and let this river flow to the nations let this river continually flow do not allow what we have in our bellies to remain a cistern but allow it to flow to different people allow it to bubble up every day that it will go to the nations and the people who sees them will encounter your presence use everyone listening right now god use everyone participating in this service right now you are the lord of the service and so we thank you with all these hands raised Bless your children, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the authority you have given us. I bless these people in the name of Jesus. Prosper them beyond what they could imagine and ask for. Heal them more than what they could imagine and ask for. Restore them beyond what they could ask for. <laughs> bless them what be beyond what they could imagine. Let your will be done upon everyone's life right now. Receive the blessing that comes from heaven above. You do not belong to this world, but you belong to Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you all.